Hello, beloved. Today is Tuesday of the sixth week of Easter, May 24th, 2022. When would a good Jew observe and keep the Passover? Well, we have specific instructions in that regard in our reading today from the book of Numbers. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 556 from Lutheran Service Book, Dear Christians, one and all, rejoice. Today we sing stanzas one through three. Dear Christians, one and all, rejoice with exaltation springing. And with united heart and voice and holy rapture singing. Proclaim the wonders God has done, how his right arm the victory won, what price our ransom cost him. Fast bound in Satan's chains I lay, death brooded darkly o'er me. Sin was my torment night and day, in sin my mother bore me. But daily deeper still I fell, my life became a living hell, so firmly sin possessed me. My own good works all came to naught, no grace or merit gaining. Free will against God's judgment fought, dead to all good remaining. My fears increased till sheer despair left only death to be my share. The pangs of hell I suffered. Today's reading is from the book of Numbers, the ninth chapter. And the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the first month of the second year, after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the people of Israel keep the Passover at its appointed time. On the fourteenth day of this month, at twilight, you shall keep it at its appointed time. According to all its statutes and all its rules, you shall keep it. So Moses told the people of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover in the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at twilight, in the wilderness of Sinai. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the people of Israel did. And there were certain men who were unclean through touching a dead body. 
so that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and Aaron on that day. And those men said to him, We are unclean through touching a dead body. Why are we kept from bringing the Lord's offering at its appointed time among the people of Israel? And Moses said to them, Wait, that I may hear what the Lord will command concerning you. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, If any one of you or of your descendants is unclean through touching a dead body, or is on a long journey, he shall still keep the Passover to the Lord. In the second month, on the fourteenth day, at twilight, they shall keep it. They shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it until the morning, nor break any of its bones. According to all the statute for the Passover, they shall keep it. But if any one who is clean and is not on a journey fails to keep the Passover, that person shall be cut off from his people, because he did not bring the Lord's offering at its appointed time. That man shall bear his sin. And if a stranger sojourns among you, and would keep the Passover to the Lord, according to the statute of the Passover and according to its rule, so shall he do. You shall have one statute, both for the sojourner and for the native. On the day that the tabernacle was set up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony. And that evening it was over the tabernacle like the appearance of fire until morning. So it was always. The cloud covered it by day, and the appearance of fire by night. And whenever the cloud lifted from over the tent, after that the people of Israel set out. And in the place where the cloud settled down, there the people of Israel camped. At the command of the Lord the people of Israel set out, and at the command of the Lord they camped. As long as the cloud rested over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. Even when the cloud continued over the tabernacle many days, the people of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was a few days over the tabernacle, and according to the command of the Lord they remained in camp. Then, according to the command of the Lord, they set out. And sometimes the cloud remained from evening until morning. And when the cloud lifted in the morning, they set out. Or if it continued for a day and a night, when the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether it was two days, or a month, or a longer time, that the cloud continued over the tabernacle, abiding there, the people of Israel remained in camp, and did not set out. But when it lifted, they set out. At the command of the Lord they camped, and at the command of the Lord they set out. They kept the charge of the Lord at the command of the Lord by Moses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him 
all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we remember and thank God for Queen Esther. Listen to this from Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. Esther, or Hadassah, as she was originally named, is the central figure in the biblical book that bears her name. She was an orphan raised by her relative Mordecai. When King Ahasuerus, Xerxes, who reigned 486 to 465 BC, became displeased with his queen, a search was made for a suitable replacement among the beautiful women of the kingdom, Esther was chosen. Mordecai became a chief minister of the king and lived in the Persian capital, Susa. He overheard a plot to kill the king and informed on the would-be assassins. This was recorded in the royal archives. When the high official Haman the Agagite commanded Mordecai to kneel before him, Mordecai refused. This convinced Haman that Mordecai and his people were rebellious and needed to be purged from the empire. If the king promised him the power to do this, he promised to pay 10,000 silver talents into the treasury. The king then issued a proclamation that the Jewish people be wiped out and their property taken. He did not realize that his wife was among those affected by the decree. When Mordecai heard of the decree, he sought to get a message to Queen Esther. He reminded her that she would not escape just because she was in the king's harem. He said, Who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Though the name of God does not appear in the Hebrew version of the book, Mordecai was clearly referring to God arranging for the queen at this time to be the instrument of salvation for his people. Esther took her life in hand, it was forbidden for anyone to approach the king without his leave and bore the death penalty if he did not graciously extend his scepter. He did extend the scepter to his beloved queen. She finally obtained the exact reversal of Haman's decree of destruction. Instead of the Jewish people being slain and their property confiscated, they were given a period of time to do this to their enemies. And in a great ironic twist, Haman was actually hanged on the very gallows that he himself had readied for hanging Mordecai. This astonishing reversal of fortunes for the Jewish people is still celebrated in their yearly feast of Purim. Queen Esther is remembered as a brave and faithful intercessor and ruler who risked her life to save her people. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, through the intercession of Queen Esther, you worked a great salvation for your ancient people, thwarting the plans of their enemies to destroy them. Continue to grant wisdom and courage to all Christian rulers, that they may provide a safe haven for the work of your church in bringing the message of salvation to people of every land. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. We conclude today, as always, with Luther's morning prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.